Hi there folks, welcome back to the IBN Andy Fishing channel. I hope you're doing really well. Please do not forget before you watch any more of this review, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That way you'll be kept in touch with all the reviews, all the fishing and all the other stuff that we get up to in this little corner of the internet. If you're already subbed, thank you very much for joining us again for what is a pretty big review on this little channel. You guys will know from the title, from the thumbnail, exactly what we've come to talk about here. We have come to talk about the Sims G3 Guide chest waders. Uh, released very very recently really interesting product this one one that if we go back to some videos that are made just towards the end of the grayling season it was a bit of a snap purchase these i was out fishing in some other waders uh, and netted a fish and as i went to get towards the bank to do some b-roll of it uh, i ripped those waders on some barbed wire underneath the surface that i hadn't seen and water just gushed through straight away there was no fixing them so off a pop to my local tackle shop Mallon and green in bakewell uh, and tried a couple of pairs on and john bless him one of the guys who owns this shop was like, look, Andy, doing what you do, you really ought to try these waders. You ought to try the new G3s. They're brilliant. I was like, John, I don't really want to spend that much on a set of waders. So I could avoid it. He said, Andy, just try them on. Just try these waders on. So I was like, all right, then. And uh, here we are. <laughs> we are ooh, four months on from there. Uh, probably about 75 days in the water. Loads of mixed use, pike fishing, chub fishing, uh, grayling fishing in cold conditions. We've had some very hot spells in May when we've been wading. I've given these a fairly, fairly good kind of short mid-range test on these. As I say, somewhere around about 75 days on the water. I've tried to work it out, but I'm not quite sure exactly what it is. It's a lot, put it that way. I've barely taken these things off since I bought them. So I'm in a pretty good position to be able to tell you more about these waders right here. Your Sims G3 chest wader is one of those products that almost doesn't need a review. Everyone knows what the Sims G3 is about. It's one of the world's most popular chest waders. Uh, made in the States, made out of Gore-Tex, made with all the good stuff that you associate with Sims over in Bozeman, Montana. But there was one thing about these in particular that really caught my eye when I tried them on. I had just finding information about them while I was in the shop and I was like, actually, yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I do quite fancy buying these, but specifically because of that. Bit of background, I worked at Farlows and Sportfish, the same company, Farlows and Sportfish, for ooh, nearly three years. Oh, sorry, nearly four years sold a lot of Sims Gore-Tex waders at that point so I'm pretty familiar with Sims and Gore-Tex and the, all the fabrics and stuff but there was something about these waders specifically that caught my eye and it was the new fabric uh, Gore-Tex Pro it's not the most imaginative name in the world for a product but Gore-Tex have released a new fabric called Gore-Tex Pro which isn't just used in chest waders but used in other industries as well climbing outdoor industries stuff like that and that has caught my eye but we're going to get onto that as we go through the waders first thing we need to do is pop these things out of the box Slidey box, that's changed recently. First thing that I found in there was a Sims wading belt. Really high quality, really nice. I have never used it. Uh, the, the amount of time I spend in the water, I must admit these days, I must be getting old, I start to feel it a little bit in my back. So I actually use a, a, a back support belt rather than this, but it is there. It feels good quality, I'm sure it'll be absolutely spot on. Take tags out of the way for the moment. That was clumsy, Andy. What I'm gonna do for first is just go through sort of what we've got here, one by one, top to bottom and then we'll talk about my experience of using the waders. So starting at the very top, as I say, they've got a new suspender system up at the top here, which I will say is incredibly comfortable. Uh, it's, it's kind of hold mesh, super breathable, uh, really, really nice quality. Everything there has worked absolutely fine. Uh, kind of buckles and stuff you'd expect, but just having this thing up here just spreads the load across your shoulders a little bit more, particularly when you know, I'm carrying, usually when I'm guiding, carrying an extra backpack, I've got my chest pack and stuff like that as well. So yeah, very, very nice. Always nice to have a little bit of support around the shoulder areas. I'll we'll come down the front. We've got the detachable tippet pocket system here. I must admit, Sims call it a tippet pocket. I can pretty much fit everything I need for a day's fly fishing on my own just in that front pocket on its own. If you don't want that there, if you find it's a bit bulky, it has actually got a zip inside, you can just take it out. You don't even have to wear it there if you don't want to. Big chunky YKK zip, uh, nice little touch like that one. Down at the front here, we've got a kind of stretchy inside pocket here. It's not waterproof, this one. Stretchy inside pocket for putting stuff in. And then a sort of demi hand warmery type pocket on the inside. At one side of it's got a little kind of micro fleece on it. The other one is just the breathable material. I must admit, it's a hand warmer pocket, probably not particularly warm but it's nice to have the option there just to tuck your hands in on the inside here another little pocket uh, i absolutely love this for car keys and phones i don't know about you i'm terrible for mislaying car keys and phones when i'm out fishing whereas having a dedicated pocket just on the inside there was a really nice touch so yeah like the fact that that's there very good 
We'll spin around to the back, and this was an interesting thing. Not something I don't think, I don't think I've seen this in any of the waders. But back here, you've actually got two belt loops, so you can wear your wading belt at different heights, and that is specifically the Sims one. It's the right size for it, my wading belt doesn't fit. But if you wear the factory wading belt, you can wear it at two different heights, depending on whether you want it kind of higher or lower on your body. Not seen that before, thought that was pretty cool. Nice little touch just below the fancy G3 branding at the top there, so everyone knows you're wearing fancy waders. The whole top section here is three layer standard Gore-Tex material. This isn't the pro material from what I can see on the literature, this is the standard material. Uh, the top bit is the bit that probably takes the least amount of hammering, so that's absolutely fine. Nice, lightweight, durable, breathable, you know what you're getting with Gore-Tex. Come down a little bit further here and we've got, I don't know how Sims have managed it, but this is actually a patented system with the way they do the seams on the lower end of the legs. And this is where you start to notice that pro material. It's really interesting this, it does feel different to the normal Gore-Tex. As I say, in the shop it stood out straight away. It's a four layer material down here, and four layer Gore-Tex, if I think back to the old G3s that I was selling in 2012. Uh, it, they were like cardboard stiff and quite noisy, quite rustly. Nothing wrong with it at all, but you knew they were there, put it that way. You definitely knew you were wearing them. Whereas this pro material, it's just quite a lot softer. It's a little bit kind of quiet, nice soft touch fabric. And for four layers, it is incredibly malleable. It's flexible um, in a way that perhaps you don't expect when you're thinking about four layers of breathable fabric. And allied to the quality of the stitching and stuff that you expect with the USA made Gore-Tex wader. Uh, this is real premium stuff. This is real fancy, high-end, expensive material. One of the other things that caught my eye on here, again, it's not something that I think I've seen before. You, again, you guys tell me. Uh, the gravel guard down here doesn't have the traditional loop, which I thought was interesting, but it's perhaps a little bit longer and perhaps a little bit more snug than a normal gravel guard. It doesn't actually need the loop. It just goes over your wading boots as normal and just kind of cinches around them. I must admit I quite like that because every now and again that loop will pop free and it's an absolute magnet for fly line or tip here. Can't think of the amount of times I've been casting away in a conventional wader and the fly line has got caught around the loop. So actually quite like the fact they've done away with that. And then we come down to one of the other big selling points of the Sims premium waders. It's the stocking foot, the actual stocking foot down here. I haven't found another brand that does the fitting on a stocking foot quite as well as Sims do. Now these are a medium 9 to 11. I'm pretty straightforward medium 9 to 11. And that stocking foot is absolutely perfect. I'm a size 44 shoe, so just about 10, nine and three quarters, call it. And it's been absolutely perfect on my foot. Really, really nice fit, really snug, no bunching. Again, Sims do this stuff really well. They've got a heap of experience. So the kind of fit, the kind of fixtures, the kind of quality you'd expect from a wader that's this expensive. It also says on the literature, there's some sort of like antibacterial stuff inside the stocking foot. I must admit, it's not a problem I've ever really thought about what's going on at the bottom of stocking foot waders. Uh, probably better off not thinking about it to be honest god knows what's living down there uh, but they say that's in there I can't comment on whether or not it's making any difference because i'll be honest it's something to try not to think too much about so you're probably getting a bit of the vibe here the big thing about these waders for me was that pro fabric a new gore-tex fabric is quite a big thing they don't really do that stuff very often they put a lot of time into designing their fabrics but they've sort of stuck with the regular material for quite a long time now the Gore-Tex marketing stuff says it's more durable more rugged more windproof more waterproof uh, and as a wader they are all of the things that you would exactly want to have in a wader. So to have that new fabric is really interesting. So fancy shoulder straps, fancy materials, a few sort of cool and innovative ideas like the wading belt thing, like the anti-back stuff in the stocking foot. How do they actually feel like when you're wearing them? Now, absolutely no doubt about it with no question at all, this is the most comfortable pair of chest waders I have ever worn. It was a pretty frustrating moment in the shop when I tried them on because John knew I didn't want to spend this much money on a set of waders. And the second I put them on, I was like, oh no. Like, <laughs> of course I'm going to end up buying these. Like, they are the most beautifully fitted set of waders I've ever owned. So if you're about my height, about six foot, similar build to me, the medium nine to 11 is just perfect. It fits me so nicely. And the cut of the fit alongside those fancy shoulder straps, which I will say was super comfortable. Uh, you're sort of getting a really nice product here, something that fits straight away, both looks and feels like the real deal. Now, obviously, I don't have the facilities here to do a full breathability test or a full waterproofness test, but I will say, uh, touch wood, where's some wood? Touch wood. In the time that I've had these waders, nothing's come through and they breathe really, really nicely. I was a little bit concerned with it being four layer down at the bottom. Do you end up really, really sweaty on a hot day? Well, let me tell you, I have guided during some pretty hot days so far this season. And no, I haven't ended up really sweaty at all. That pro material genuinely is breathing hard for you. It's working hard to get the moisture away and nothing has come through so far. 
I really like this tippet pocket. As I say, they call it a tippet pocket, but actually I've found room for all sorts of stuff in here. A nice little slot down the front for your forceps. I can fit a, a tacky day box in there or the smaller tacky box, absolutely fine. Mucilin, tippet, spare leader, mobile phone, pretty much everything has gone in this pocket, absolutely fine. It's, it's actually a decent size. It's a really big pocket. I've never taken it off even when I'm not using it. I just found it easy to leave it on. But having the option of taking it off just to make things in front of you a little bit more compact is really nice. I did find out the hard way that it's not a waterproof pocket. So you've got to be careful when you're wading that this doesn't go too far in because after a while it does let some water in. Fortunately, I've learned from past experience and <laughs> my mobile phones are all now waterproof. Uh, but yeah, really, really nice to have that. Just make sure you're not dunking it too far in the river. One of my absolute favourite features of these, and this is going to sound ridiculous for a wader at this price, one of my absolute favourite features of these waders was that inside pocket that just sits on the inside left of the wader. It was really handy there because I'm terrible for putting my car keys down or putting them in a pocket and then misplacing them, losing them at the bottom of a pack. Having that there was really, really nice. Now this is the one black mark I've got so far against these waders, is that actually, through a seemingly no fault of my own, this pocket's worn through. Uh, it's only kind of a welded seam down at the bottom with maybe a bit of adhesive, I'm not sure. But it's actually, you can see my, it's gone through there. And I found this out the hard way uh, when I got back to the car one day and found my keys were basically down in the stocking foot of the wader. And for a wader at this price, you sort of hoping stuff like that isn't gonna go wrong. You'd like to think that pocket had been glued up a bit better. And the first really frustrating thing about that now is that essentially that's now a useless feature because it's gone through. Uh, I've got no evidence to say this is going to happen on every pair. I'm sort of guessing at some point my car keys were pointing down and it's just sort of worked its way through during the course of the day. Could be user error, I don't know. But yeah, a little bit frustrated about that because I really quite like that pocket, but I'll find somewhere else to put my car keys now. Oh well. Now, sort of faddy features aside, the one thing you are absolutely demanding from a Sims G3 guide wader is durability you know these have got to last they're a really expensive set of waders they have got to last and i've spent about 20 minutes before i started this review just going through all of the seams on the waders just bit by bit to try and find a weakness to try and find something that has come loose and there is absolutely nothing now i firmly believe this nobody makes uh, waders wader seams particularly as well as sims doing that factory in montana they are absolutely faultless whatever it is they've got painted it in here it is really working for them because I've really, really pushed these waders over the last few months. Not a stitch out of line. There's a couple of little trimmy bits every here and there where you think, oh, actually, there's a couple of stitches loose there. But when you're talking about the actual important bits, the actual wadery bit that's keeping you dry, there is literally not a stitch out of place. And that is very, very impressive. As I say, a lot of my wading can be quite uncomfortable wading, slipping in and out of high banks, crawling through stuff, sliding down stuff. On the back side here, there is a little bit of sign of some delamination in some places on that pro fabric. But to be honest, I've sort of built a level of trust with that fabric where I think that even these tiny little signs of a little bit of delamination, I'm not too worried about it. And again, sort of in that delicate area in the crotch area of a wader where it's likely to go wrong, there is not a stitch out of place. Really, really impressive. As I say, you'd expect it for the price, but to see it happen in real time, really, really impressive. There are a few extra signs of wear down here on the stocking foots in the places you might expect right down on the seams. As I say, for a wader that's had somewhere around about 75 days on the water so far in all sorts of conditions from absolutely freezing cold to absolutely boiling hot and pretty much everything in between, it's probably the sort of wear you'd expect to see on a stocking foot. I'm not too worried about it. These are taped inside and out after all. I think they'll be absolutely fine. No signs of wear at all on that gravel guard. It's still retaining its elasticity, which is important because that's the only thing holding it in place without the loop. No wear, no major bobbling, everything there is A-OK -okay and it's kept gravel out from day one to yesterday when I took them off. So you've got the full package with the G3 guides really. I mean, you've got the fancy materials, you've got the fancy cut, you've got the amazing stitching, you've got the fancy pockets, you've got those really comfortable shoulder straps that stay in place all day. You've got the fancy antibacterial stuff in the stocking feet and you've got the air at the back where you can adjust that weight and belt to your own fit. There is not a lot these waders are possibly missing. Sims have put pretty much everything they could have put on these waders onto them. And as I say, for the price you're going to pay for these waders, it is no less than you'd expect. So your Sims Guide G3s here in the UK are currently retailing £799. Now that is a huge amount of money for a set of waders. Do not get me wrong. I'm not expecting every single flyer in the UK to go out and spend £800 on a pair of waders. So the question then becomes, well, who should? 
And for someone in my position who's spending the amount of time on water that I spend, uh, I'm probably one of those classic examples. If you're spending the amount of time I'm spending in a river, then this is probably likely to be your first choice wader. The reality is that most people aren't, but a lot of people will be spending time in the water in, in really harsh conditions. So if, you're, if you've got a fancy trip booked to Iceland or a fancy trip booked to Norway or something like that, Alaska in the middle of winter or something like that, if you're in the middle of nowhere and you've got to take a set of waders with you that you can trust, why would you not spend the extra money on buying a set of waders that you can definitely trust? And believe me, having sold G3s over the years in shops and having worn the new iteration of G3s, I trust these things. All the areas where you'd expect to see a wader starting to go wrong in a way that's going to be impactful, in a way that's going to spoil your day, spoil your week, spoil your sessions, it isn't. Absolutely nothing has moved. Every stitch is in place. Every piece of material still looks fine. Everything's still breathing, everything's still waterproof. And that is exactly what you demand from a set of waders at this cost. I remember a few years ago, a guy I worked with said to me, the very best sets of waders are the ones that you don't notice you're wearing while you're wearing them. And it makes so much sense when you've stuck a set of these on. You don't notice the shoulder straps because they stay where they are. You don't notice the fancy material because it's just keeping you breathing and it's keeping you dry. You don't notice the stocking foots because there's no bunching, there's no discomfort. You don't notice gravel getting down into the boots because it's not, because your gravel guard's working. And if there's one thing I could say about the G3s since I bought them is that I've just not thought about waders. You just throw them on, you stick your boots on, you stick your belt on, you get in the river. You don't even notice you're wearing these things. And that is the biggest compliment I think I could possibly pay to the guy G3s is that you just don't notice you've got them on. One thing you will notice is that big hole in your bank account. But as I say, if, you, if you're valuing your fishing that high that you're going and doing those high value trips and stuff like that, why on earth would you take the risk? If you're doing enough fishing in the UK, if you're a weekly angler, if you're a twice weekly angler, again, why not just invest something that you're really going to get lots of time out of and do it that way? There are lots and lots of really, really good wader options out there in the UK at the moment. In fact, out in the world at the moment, there are lots of really good wader options. But there is probably only one very best option. And that very best option for most guides, for most of the people who are doing the traveling stuff all over the world, the very best option for the next few years is going to be the Guide G3 with that new pro material from Gore-Tex. Brilliant set of waders. I reckon I'm going to leave it there, guys, at that. Please do let me know what you think of this review. Hopefully, it is also absolutely perfect. Uh, let me know your experience of Guide G3s if you own a set yourself or if you've been looking for a new set of waders. Let me know if you're going to go and try a set of these on. I would strongly recommend it. If you can warrant the money, you, you're going to go and try these on. If you can warrant the money, you're probably already going to buy a set of Guide G3s without watching this review. But go and try them on. They're so much more comfortable than everything else. You have my permission to spend the money. Thank you very much, folks. Ivy and I are going to see you guys again soon for some more reviews, some more fishing and some more fun stuff very, very soon. Take care, folks. Bye bye.